Okay, today I'm gonna to go through four different sciatic nerve flossing exercises that you can do at home for those of you who've got problems or neural tension issues down the sciatic nerve from your lower back. So this would suit people who've got a really high neural tension in their hammies, they feel like they've got really short hammies, but it's actually their sciatic nerve tension that's the problem. Those are the sort of people who have really tightness through the back of the leg into the knee when they try and stretch their sciatic nerve or they have problems bending forward, they feel really tight down through their calves and back of the leg. The other type of people is so those of you who have had lumbar spine disc herniations with sciatica or a disc bulge with sciatica and you're now left with all this neural tension down the leg. It also can suit people who are sort of semi-acute who've got current sciatica to try and help mobilize the nerve. We'll talk about that. You've got to be careful with that one. And there's also a couple for entrapment. So when you've had the disc herniation and you've got a little bit of entrapment of that nerve through some disc material, to try and help mobilize that and get that nerve better. Now the first one I'm gonna do is usually the easiest one and that's the one we give people who are sort of just starting off but also in that acute phase of the lower back. Now what I get people doing is trying to sort of educate themselves that it's not the, side, the, not the hamstring that you're trying to stretch, okay? It feels very similar but what you're trying to get moving is the whole tibial sciatical nerve through to the lower back down the back of the leg. You're trying to get that whole thing, tissues moving through the leg to try and free it up a little bit. Because it can get very, very tight. And you're not trying to stretch it longer, you're trying to mobilize it. And so we go through a floss, not a stretch. So it's not like trying to stretch out and stretch your hamstrings, okay? And a lot of people try and do this and hold it and put it really hard on and they feel like pain in the back of the knee. So we're not trying to hold a stretch, we're not trying to stretch a nerve, we need to floss it. So the first one I want you working on is trying to get at least your knee up to sort of 90 degrees of the hip with your knee bent at that stage. Now, most people with neural tension, you have no problems with this. So when you're lying there, clasp your hands around the back of your hamstring and lock them in. So at least you can just have your arms hang straight and that doesn't go anywhere. Then you're going to just focus on the first part of this flossing, which is just moving the knee with the toe pointed. Okay, so what I want you trying to do is just straighten your leg up until you feel a little bit of a drag through the back of the leg and then back off. Now some of you might be super flexible and you go all the way, that's fine, you can progress to the next one. But those who are tight, when they come up, they usually will feel the symptoms in that point. And they might find on the other leg, which doesn't have that sciatic nerve problem, as they go all the way and it goes, oh I don't feel it there. So. Remember, this is not to be confused with a hamstring stretch. When you come in here, it's not a hamstring stretch you're feeling. It'll be more a tightness down the back here. And as long as you're not going so far that you feel any pain in your lower back, then that's good. So if you're getting to the point where you're coming up and you're getting to the, oh, there's pain in my lower back, that's too far. So you want to sit below that. So the, the recipe is work on keeping your toe pointed and just trying to work on the range that you're comfortable with up and down, okay? You're gonna get a bit of quads fatigue when you do quite a few reps of this because you're gonna do about sort of 15 to 30 in a set, and I'd try and aim for two or three sets of this. So you might find there's a bit of quadricep weakness here um, that you've gotta get through, but this sort of movement in the pain-free range, you can feel a little bit of tension, but I don't want sharp pains or an increase in that psychic nerve pain. Now that's the first one I want you to work on. The second part, if you've loosened it yourself up to a point where, okay, that feels a bit better, and you'll notice because you may find you're bending forwards a bit slightly a bit easier, then you can progress to keeping it up there and just flossing the nerve component from the knee down by using the foot. So what we just did then was sort of flossing the knee component here. Now you're gonna keep that still, so you're gonna come up to the point where you're about to feel symptoms with your toe pointed, and keep that fixed and then start moving the ankle. So then you're gonna to go toes toward and toes away. So toes toward and toes away. Now what I'm doing is I'm not stretching the hamstring at, at all at this point. You might feel a little bit of tightness there, but I'm not trying to actively stretch the hamstring. What I'm trying to do is I'm gonna try and, when I go to dorsiflexion, I drag the sciatic nerve and the tibial nerve through the back of the knee and also through the lower back. So I'm just trying to drag it through the tissues and then back it off. So I'm not moving my knee at all with this one, because this is just the sort of learning phase. You're just trying to work on, can you just get movement through there? Now you'll be quite surprised, you start working on this, those 
both those two, so this one here with the toe pointed, and then a fixed position, and then move the foot, you'd be quite surprised how much freedom that gives that nerve when you bend forward or move forward and straighten that leg out. You may also find it drops down some of that pain you might be having. So those people who have got that acute lumbar disc issue with sciatica, maybe a bit of a nerve press, and have pain down their leg, you may find this quite relieving, but be careful with it because you're not allowed to aggravate that, of course. So these sort of exercises should be done under the guidance of a physio, making sure you're cleared for that. And if you are, then these may be helpful in getting that disc problem better. Now, when you start working on sort of that's a bit easier and you want to work on two things together, I suggest you go to this one, which is the pole. Now, you can either use a pole or you can use a wall. I don't really mind, but what you do is you go up again into a type of hamstring stretch. Now, it's got to be sort of a uh, high enough, obviously, to get your foot on. Some people don't have a pole in their room, of course. You could use a wall with an open door so your leg goes through the door. What you do is get your leg up to a point where you're starting to feel a little bit of tension starting with your foot towards you. So your knee's bent, okay? So don't want your knee straight, okay? We're stretching the heck out of the sciatic nerve. We want your knee bent, but we want your toes or your foot dorsiflexed, okay? So the toes towards your knee bend, that's your start position. Now, if you wanna just keep the tension off that nerve, you keep your leg up. If you want more tension on, you put your leg down. Okay, so or you put it halfway down. I'm starting with my leg up like this to just show you. This point here, the flossing part is both together. Now, what I don't want is I don't want to sort of straighten my knee and keep my toes towards me. That's stretching. Okay, so at this point here, what I want to do is when I straighten my knee, I point my toe. Okay, and then when I bring my toe towards me, I bend my knee. Now what's happening there, you've just got to get this knee and the, right, the foot in the right position. You should feel some tension all the way through. And it should be pretty even, okay? So as I try and increase the tension of straightening the knee, I'm reducing the tension by planting the foot. And as I basically increase the tension of bringing my toe towards me, I decrease the tension here. Now this is called flossing, just like flossing your teeth. If you imagine there was a piece of dental floss all the way down the back of my leg. If I went and just straightened it with my foot that way, I would just tighten the floss like that. What I want to do is keep the floss in a reasonable tension and move it on both ends. Okay, so that's why we call it flossing. We're trying to floss the nerve by going, okay, if I'm going to straighten my knee and increase the tension, I've got to drop it down the back end. Otherwise, it's going to pull too much tension around here. And if you've got an acute disc problem here, that's gonna make it worse. So just be careful that you're not trying to straighten your knee and keep the dorsiflexion by stretching out your leg. Okay, it's gotta be a floss, point the toe, straighten the knee, and return. Okay, so that's your flossing one against the wall. Now, when you get looser, and when you have problems into rotation, what you can do is then move that neural flossing into rotation. So let's take a look at that. So people who've got sort of reduced neural tension, but they're still getting maybe some entrapment issues, or they've still got pain on one side of their lower back, what we tend to get them doing is doing some of that neural flossing along with all the other exercises into rotation. So if it's one-sided, what you can do if on the side of the problem, so that's my left-hand side, I want to be rotating right. Now what that's doing is opening up the left-hand side where that nerve root or nerve roots are coming out, to give them more freedom of movement. So we're not trying to close that down and, and compress it, we're trying to open it up. So this is not for people with an acute disc problems. This is for chronic stuff down the track where the disc is probably healing, but there's still some sciatic tension nerve problems going on, or you've got some entrapment from a piece of disc material that's broken off. So what you do is go near a wall. Now I'm using a pole today, but that could easily just be a wall in your house. And you're gonna go and do the same neural flossing as we did it up against the wall into rotation. So, if you look at this, I'm gonna take my leg over into rotation and put my foot on there. Now already, if you try this, you'll feel like there's tension down through the leg already, okay? So at this point here, if this is too much, you need to go back to the wall. But what you wanna do in this position is the same idea. When I straighten my leg, I'm gonna point my toe. So you've just gotta to get yourself in the position where if this leg straightens, point your toe. And then when you bend your knee, 
your toe comes up towards you. So there should be sort of some sort of tension all the way through here the entire time. Now some people don't have the quad strength to straighten their leg against some neural tension, so you can put your hand on here, and as I push that knee straight, I point my toe. As I let it go, the toe comes up. There will be some little changes through here. You might find at some point the tension drops down a bit, but then comes back when you straighten the knee but point the toe. It's a little change. It might shift up or down a little bit, but as long as it's mostly the same, so straighten, point your toe, bend, dorsiflex your toe. Straighten, point your toe, bend, point your toe. You'll find that that is another effective way of loosening up the back of the leg, but of course loosening up this component in the lower back as well, because previously you were keeping your lower back still in one position, now you're working into rotation. So once you've got those three um, perfected, you should find that your bending forward is a lot better, your neural tension is down quite a lot. Now the next one is for entrapment. So the last one is for those of you who've got entrapment or had entrapment of the nerve root in the canal from either a lumbar spine disc herniation or sesquation or even surgery. Now this one again is not to be confused with stretching, it's not a stretch, it's a floss. So we also in the clinic use this as a test. Now the test is a slump test and we're going to use this as a slump slider or a slump flosser to help you get that moving. So in the clinic the test is we have our hands behind us and slumped down into the, like, the worst posture you've ever seen. And what you want to do is put the back into flexion. Now, of course, you don't want to do this with acute disc bulge. So this is for the people who are chronic, had their disc problem, but still got problems through that side of the nerve, and they can tolerate a bit of flexion. So at that point, there shouldn't be any pain through the leg or through the back. But what they may find is when we put the chin down, there might be pain there, just a little bit. Or if we put the chin down, and then the leg that's affected, if we straighten that out, then there's the pain. Okay, so there might be pain in the hamstring, pain in the back of the knee or the calf, pain in the back, or just simply tighter on one side than the other. So you might be one of those people who are really old, this problem that's still got tension through there, and when you go into this position here, your right one's okay, but your left one is like, oh, it's really tight. So this is the sort of exercise that we can get you doing to try and improve that. So what you do is you start from neutral, hands behind you, slump down, but head up. Okay, so you start the head up. Now this is very similar to dorsiflex and straightening the knee. So what we want to do is have the leg straight or where that point of tension is. Okay, so when you get to the point where there's tension in a slump position but your head up or there's pain there, and then what you do is when you drop your chin down, what you don't want to do is hold your leg there and drop your chin down because that's stretching the nerve. We want to drop the chin down and bend the knee to there. Okay, now when I straighten the leg up, I want to lift the head. Okay, so again, think of that dental floss. When I want to pull the floss on, I want to bring the leg down. And when I bring the leg up, I want to bring the head up. Okay, now you'd only do sort of three or four and then you bring yourself out of that slump position back into neutral. It's crucial that you don't stay down that position for 30 reps, okay, and causing problems there. You want to just be two or three and then up reset and then go again. Just make sure when you do this, you're not chin down and leg up at the same time. So there's my four sciatic nerve flossing exercises. See how they go for your lower back problems.